I, I moved to New York many, many years ago for one reason, to be in a Broadway show. I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with my career, but uh, this is the dream come true finally after all this time. It's, and it's been, uh, it, the dream really is for me to sing and say things that have never been sung and said before by another voice. Uh, and, 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 and so the dream just keeps coming true along the way. Just the demo is the dream because you're like, nobody ever sang that song before. I got the first crack at it, you know. And the fact that it kind of keeps growing up one little step at a time, I, I, I really couldn't ask for anything more or be happier. How many times have I heard, Hazel, can't you find somebody? What on earth you waiting for? Finally I found the answer. Right when we said good night at my door. So, go on and ask me where my guy can be. Of all the luck, guess what? He just happened to me. This is very, very special and exciting because for the first time I think ever I'm sitting with the entire creative team of a brand new musical and this musical is called Hazel. It's going to be opening it in Chicago at the Drury Lane. This is Ron Abel who did the music, Chuck Steffen who did the lyrics, the star Clea Blackhurst who plays Hazel, Lisa Levin who did the book, and Josh Burgas who is the director. So, I, it, I wow, I mean I don't even know where to start. Usually it's a one-on-one -on -one here. <laughs> so, do you want to tell us how you and Chuck got interested in beginning to write this to begin with and how Lissa caught into the fold, etc. I'm going to just turn sure, it over to you. Sure, sure. Uh, a number of years ago, we were approached by someone just to think about musicals and what might be appealing to her, not clear, but the inspiration for this. Um, and we came to her with like three ideas and Hazel, literally, I'm speaking for him, but he said it just, he had never thought of the show in like years. And he said, thinking of this particular artist. Decades. Decades. <laughs> he, he just said Hazel. And we had a couple of other ideas, but Hazel was the one that uh, really piqued her interest. So that, that's how it began. It just, it, we would have never thought of it otherwise. And then when it came time uh, to write the book, Chuck said Lissa was the only person he wanted to do it. Lisa and I had written another musical called Twist of Fate, which she won the Kleban Award for. Oh, wow. That's so, a big award. yes, yes. <laughs> so, and she blessedly said yes to this. Um, uh, so that's how it all began. And then. And this was a TV show out of the. 50s? 60s. 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 Okay. 60s. When you could actually refer to your housekeeper as a maid, which if I did that today, I'd get slapped. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. We, uh, the subtitle for the show, subtitle? Is that the, is, is that the right yeah. word? Subtitle is Hazel, a musical made in America. Oh, I love so that. So okay. we, we're, 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 we're keeping that sort of alive uh, okay. for it, but, but um, yeah. Say, I'm going to tell you what to say. Don't no, to but uh, it's also, I think, in my experience talking about it, a lot of people don't realize that, that Hazel was actually a, a, a comic, oh, uh, a, a, single, a single panel comic in the um, Saturday, the Saturday evening. No, no, she no. just a, a comic, single, single panel. panel comic strip. It wasn't a whole strip. It, it was, was a single whole, panel. It was a whole page, on a, but it was a single panel. Oh, okay. So it was a really in the Saturday Evening Post, back correct? Page. The yes, back page, back and so she, it, she was very popular in the '40s and '50s, and then the, the television series with Shirley Booth is in the '60s. That's sort of its next incarnation, and this will be its next incarnation after that. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And uh, Ted Key, who created the character in the comic, always wanted her to be a musical. So, and we got to know him right before he died. He was like 94, I think, when mm -hmm. he died. Wow. And we started speaking to him around when he was 90. He was 92, taking care of his invalid wife, who was 94, <laughs> when we first talked to wow. her. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wonderful man, though. Great personality, you know, just alive and 
But also that even though it's set in the 60s and based on a cartoon of the 40s, um, to take something and the show has a modern sensibility. So in terms of everything, in terms of the music, in terms of the set pieces, in terms of the comedy, and it is definitely a comedy, uh, it has a modern sensibility, which we are so incredibly thrilled to have this man yeah. <laughs> to execute that. I think that's right. I think that's what's so exciting about it and what drew me to it is when I got to hear the score, which is, you know, just, it's really wonderful and it's got so many different styles of music and, um, and feels contemporary. It doesn't feel dated, doesn't feel like a period piece at all. And then with the writing, which is so smart and clever and, and funny, um, it, it really feels like something that we want to do today. And so that's the approach for this production with all the design elements and um, as we go through and just trying to make it uh, you know, smarter and more contemporary and, and a piece that appeals to people today. The official opening night in Chicago is The official April opening night 6th? is April 6th at the Drury Lane Theater. Um, but when did previews start? In Oak, Oak, Oak Brook Terrace. Oak it's, Brook? it's right outside yeah. of Chicago. It's, it's, it's part of Chicago. It's just like right, you know, a and suburb. It, and it runs till... It runs till May, May 30, 31st? May 29th. May 29th. May 29th. Last day of May. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And the previews obviously start... Uh, March 31st, I believe. Pre the first preview is March 31st. Ever since we've now been in real having readings in the lab and now going into production, it's evident to everybody who's seen that the, it was the role that she was born oh. to play. Born that to she, I it, agree it, 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 is, it is just... Not that she was born... Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard, it's hard to envision having now... Anybody else. Anybody else yeah. start this role off. It's just amazing. I mean, everybody says it. It's just... Incredible. Well, then, and I, I suppose that at this point, if you're rewriting or rewriting anything new, that, that she's like an inspiration that, you know, you hear, you hear her oh. in your head. Well, how lucky am I as a composer that that's the voice that I get to, <laughs> to write for? Hello. Yeah. So. The script just made me so happy, and I felt like, as I was reading the first page, I'm like, they did not have any, this has nothing to do with me, but this is me. And, and, and th th their roles come along, like, we all know any number of people could play things, because that's life in that show business, but I know nobody could do it better. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's, and that's not a statement I say easily. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things that come and go, but this one is like, oh, I know how to say what she says, and she was writing it before there was me to say it. So I know that that's a, 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 good, a good match. But all the better that we have you, because to be able to now shape it even further, you know, with your just incredible speaking and singing voice and in our and warmth warm. in our heads and to switch <laughs> seamlessly seamlessly from comedy to heart hmm. to poignancy over and over again without a hitch it's an extraordinary ability I, I, i'm really excited because Ron and Chuck just wrote a new song for Clea that um, <clears throat> we heard in its entirety, I think for the first time yesterday. And, and you, was that your first time hearing it? Yeah. And we are all just dying to hear Clea <laughs> sing it now. Not that Ron was bad at all, but it's just so exciting to, to, to see these guys write songs for her now, you know, knowing exactly who's doing it yeah. um, and, and watching the piece evolve that way. Guys like he can, gals like me can, ain't it funny how it starts? One moment so rare comes out of nowhere, and you meet that someone you were hoping would come along and bust your heart wide open. It feels cause he just happened to me.